Hey, so I was thinking the other day how nice it would be if I could uh, add to my personal website a kind of page where I could show off the books I've been reading and some ratings and reviews for those books, as well as like whether I'd finished them or not. Um, and so having worked out how to do that um, and had a bit of a mess about with it, uh, I decided it'd be a good idea to put together some screencasts which basically walk through how to build that. So uh, here's what we're going to be building. Uh, if we have a look at this, um, we've basically got uh, a React app, um, which is set up uh, to take in data from a back end. Um, and that data is basically uh, an image of the book cover. And we've got like the titles of these books and, and these first two are ones I'm still reading. So we've got like my progress through them um, and how much I've read as well as some tags down here um for for like what kind of book they are maybe later i'll add some sort of searching by tag or something and then for finished books instead of bringing in the progress we're bringing in a review and also like a star rating for them um and it's kind of all responsive right so it's actually using css grid um but depending on the viewport width it will adjust how it's laid out um so that uh, so that it kind of always works and i was thinking about where to keep the data for the for the back end for this um, that would be easy for me to update as I read books. Um, and what we could do, I could just build some sort of back end service where I, I, I log in and I put in this data or I could store this maybe as, as Markdown or JSON or something. Um, but I didn't really want to have to do that. I wanted to have some sort of back end somewhere where I could easily come in and just like update my reading or, or add, add some notes to this review or add a new book. Um, and recently, I've been using this tool called Airtable quite a lot. And if you haven't seen Airtable, it's an absolutely amazing piece of kit, which is slowly replacing an awful lot of other bits of software that I use to manage various bits of my life. Uh, and it's kind of like a cross between uh, a spreadsheet and like a relational database, uh, but it's incredibly easy to use. And one of the nice things about Airtable is that they have a really, really good API. So I was thinking that I could set up an Airtable database and then have that Airtable database populate this app on my website. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, there are a couple of problems associated with this, which we'll come back to, mainly the fact that because this is gonna be a React app, my uh, like authentication keys would need to be like in this app in order to get the data from Airtable. And I don't want to give my Airtable keys to all of the all of the clients that hit this up, all the browsers, all the people looking at it. So we need some kind of intermediary service that's going to make calls to uh, to Airtable to get the data out of Airtable and then turn that into a thing which my front end can use. And we're going to actually do that using AWS Lambda functions. So the back end is essentially an air table, which looks like this. And it's just a simple table. And if we want to add uh, a book to this, so I wanted to add Pride and Prejudice, I can just add a row to this table. Um, and we can put in kind of, I don't know, like the author. And then I need to upload an image, which we can do by just dragging it up here. And let's add some tags. So this is fiction. And let's say I'm like 10% of the way through reading this. Now, having added this to Airtable, and it's literally that simple, this is just a web app, um, I should be able to come back here, refresh this. And there we are. Pride and Prejudice is, is showing up. It's that simple to add stuff. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to use Airtable for this, because like adding and updating data, if I come in and I'm like, oh, okay, I've read a bit more of it, I'm at 50% now. Um, it's, it's as easy as, easy as that. And we can see that's updated to 50%. Um, and if, if I'd finished this book, I want to be able to say, okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, I finished it. Um, and I want to give it a date that I finished it on and then maybe give it a rating of like two stars. And now what I should find is that this has been updated. So we've got our two star rating there instead of our progress. So that's what we're going to be building basically um, using Airtable for the back end as like the, the kind of headless CMS and then using React for the front end. And we're going to deploy this rather than building a like building a little express app to act as a server and all this kind of stuff. 
um, we're going to deploy this uh, to a tool called Netlify. Um, and Netlify is an absolutely amazing bit of kit as well. Um, I've only just discovered Netlify. This is the first project that I've put on Netlify. Um, and it basically lets us lets us set up a whole load of stuff that easily deploys this. So when we push new commits to GitHub, it will build it, it will deploy it for us, and it will kind of do all that continuous integration type stuff that we might need. And we'll be looking at how we can use Netlify to easily deploy AWS Lambda functions, which is a, a new feature that Netlify have, have released recently. So that's what we're going to be building. Um, now let's have a look at how we're going to build it. Okay, so let's have a look at the agenda for the next couple of videos. So when I started recording this, I didn't realize quite how long it was likely to be. So this is actually gonna be a three-part series. Um, what you've just watched is the first part, and then there's gonna be two more videos. The first one, we're gonna cover all of the React stuff, and we're gonna do it all from scratch. So I haven't prepared any of the CSS, we're gonna hand write all of that. So that's quite a long video but it's, it's a good one to watch if you're trying to understand how to build the React front end. Um, and we're not gonna be doing any stuff to do with Airtable or Netlify. Um, we're just gonna be building out a front end with a mocked API, which I'll explain at the beginning of that video, um, and then setting up all the CSS. And then in the second video, uh, or the, the third part even, we're gonna be um, adding in all of the Netlify stuff and the Lambda functions and the Airtable hookup and setting up the Airtable. So there's going to be three parts. The first one is the intro, what we're going to build, which you've just watched. The second one is the front end. And the third one is the back end stuff with the Lambda functions and Airtable. So head on to the second video. And if you haven't already, uh, hit subscribe down there. And if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter at Danny Smith. See you in the next video.